Hello and welcome to episode 36. I'm sorry it's been a bit of a delay, but we've been incredibly busy. But I've got about an hour spare, so I figured I'd move on to the next section that we plan to do. And today we're going to look at a couple of dirt cheap Chinese microphones. Now, these are the ones that people seem to respond to all the time when they watch these videos. And I get messages that say things like, where's the link? Where can I buy one of these things from? Well, I don't really want you to buy one. Uh, and I think there's enough clues in the videos that if you do want to buy one, you can go out and search it for yourself and you can buy one. Uh, and the reason I don't want you to buy one is because I don't think they're particularly good value for money. And I don't really want to be recommending things that I don't wholeheartedly believe in. Now that said, these two mics do have something going for them. One, because it's so common if you buy it online, uh, you'll see literally dozens and dozens of them in, in every shape, size or even colour. Um, but are they any good? Well, we're going to put them up and see what actually happens. But first, an apology. Uh, we're quite busy today and I've got a frantic need to charge a load of batteries. So if you can hear any fans in the background, it's because I've had to press into use every single battery charge that I've got and I'm trying to charge every battery at the same time. And so some of the chargers are a bit noisier than others. But please forgive that. Um, we'll start on this particular one. Um, <laughs> cardioid condenser microphone. <laughs> it's great for karaoke, PC recording, instrument recording, etc. Excellent audio, spelt wrong. But let's ignore that. And also, you need to actually um, get patteries to make these work, it says on the box. Um, it's supplied with a 1.5 volt battery, which you'll see makes no sense whatsoever. Right, the giveaways with these microphones. Dinky little microphone. It's got a small electric cardioid element in it and it's a mic in a tube. Uh, I'll pull it to pieces and you can have a look inside if you want. So, that's it inside. Top section, microphone, internal foam. Second section, tiny PCB, couple of capacitors on one side, some surface mount devices, a discrete transistor, and an XLR at the end. So that's the construction. It's nothing particularly special, you stick it together, it's a little bit on the bent side, but when you screw it together, you got one of these. It's quite light as well. Microphone to one side, first one of our clues, the XR2 3 circuit, complete with yeah, XR2 3 circuit mini jack. Uh, this one's actually bent, um, oh, yeah. it moves quite freely in a rubbery surround. Uh, First thing, of course, is to look at the spec, and it says, ooh, nothing of any real excitement at all. Unidirectional, 20 to 20. It's got some sensitive sensitivity features, and um, if you obtain effect to your moderate level for protected from sauna from pounding. This thing cost me $15, um, a $15 microphone. Now, evidently, if I plug it into a laptop, it's going to record. So presumably, we can assume that it will function on a power supply of 5 volts up to phantom. Well, we'll, we'll give it a phantom shortly. Give it 48 volts up the spout and see what happens. What does it come with? Uh, Uh, 
apart from a staple through the finger because it's got a staple. Um, plastic shock mount. I, I guess it's not dreadful. And a foam windshield. So stuff that in there and you're going. So that's that microphone. The other in today's quick video, a large diaphragm studio recording microphone. Well, I can live with that sort of labeling. It makes much more sense, doesn't it? Um, it does actually say it's 36 to 52 volt uh, phantom power. That's quite clear on the labels. Comes with a heavy duty suspension mount. That'll be interesting. This one, if it helps, uh, I actually paid a bit more for. It's $25. Um, and interestingly, the picture on the front looks to me like an 87. So, got a picture of a U87 on the box. Ooh, does that mean it's a U87 inside? Uh, frankly, for $25, I suspect not. Um, identical foam windshield. Mmm. Identical XLR to 3.5 mil jack. Oh, I hope I'm not going to be disappointed with this one. Um, oh, and the uh, shock mount isn't a shock mount at all. The shock mount is metal and it's a screw on, which I don't know if I should be hopeful or not. But basically, it's, it's quite a nice little cast unit on the bottom with the usual large diameter no nut that you screw up to tighten it. So that, I think, is, you know, reasonably hopeful. has got a piece of foam around the bottom just to protect it when you screw it onto the microphone. So should I be getting excited? Uh, no. But what I do have is a Lexal branded quite chunky and metal microphone. Now this thing is actually decently heavy and it's got a thread around the bottom which will go on that. Go on there. So if we put that on there, turn the nut. Yeah. Um, it's not a U87. It doesn't look anything like a U87. In actual fact I'm not even sure it looks like any of the microphones that I've previously seen. Um, but I am slightly hopeful for this one because the build quality is pretty decent. Um, that's, that's not bad at all. Very solid mic. Hold up. No, the, the, I can't see through the grill, so I can't tell you what size diaphragm it is. And uh, if it says on the spec, I wouldn't necessarily believe that. But this isn't looking too bad at all. Right, next step. Let's plug them in and have a listen. At the moment, you've been listening to me on the usual SM7B. Uh, so we're going to switch across to this and let's have a listen what happens. Right, here we go. Uh, some recording. Uh, it took a bit longer for me to do this than anticipated because the BM800 the ever so popular cheap one didn't work. So I had to go back home where I got another one um, and we're on version number two. So yeah, the first one was totally dead. It didn't work at all. Now, this is one of the reasons when if you buy a cheap microphone, you might be lucky and it might work. But what happens if you buy one like me? Uh, I always buy mics in twos generally. Um, so two microphones of the same kind, if they turn out to be really good, is a very good, useful thing to have in your toolbox. Two of anything, uh, stereo, guitars, all the things you would normally use to perhaps do mics for. Uh, drum overheads, any any of these things you need two identical mics for. So I always buy mics in twos. It's very rare I buy just a one. And I bought two of these BM800s and I'm really glad I did because at least I've got one that works. And the other one, of course, is junk. There is no point whatsoever sending them back. Uh, with most of the overseas suppliers, they tell you you can send them back. And if you do, you go to the post office and discover it's going to cost a huge amount of money. And in this case, to send something back to China is more than I paid for the microphone. 
So it's a throw it in the dustbin job. Or give it away to a friend or um, maybe sell it on eBay as a non-working thing and someone can have it for five, ten, ten, ten pounds and uh, make a go out of it if they're that way inclined. It's a good deal for them. Uh, it doesn't really bother me. Um, but microphones that don't work uh, are no use to anybody. So now we've got two mics. We've got the Lexal, which was a little bit more expensive. Uh, and is made of decent metal. It's heavy, it's solid. Uh, I wonder if it'll hold up against other mics that I've got. But more importantly, will it hold up against this real cheapy that I've got, the BM800? And you see these so often. eBay is full of them, AliExpress is full of them. They're just everywhere. The one thing I have noticed is that the two BM800s are not actually the same. If I put them together here, um, I can see the insides more clearly on the new one that I've got that works. The foam is slightly higher density on this one, so even two identical ones appear to be different batches. The foam on this one makes it more difficult to see inside, and on that one it's quite easy. So that's the uh, state of play at the moment, one broken one. So let's get rid of that. We have two microphones. I've moved them very slightly just so I think that will be better and fairer for this test. So, suffer the guitar playing again time I'm afraid. Here we go, let's see what the differences are and can you hear them. Okay, here come the tests, let's see what we get.
Okay, let's finish this up with these two microphones on my voice. So at the moment, you're listening to me on the cheap, buy them everywhere, BM800. The spec is typical of all these small electric elements. It's not bad. You know, it claims 20 to 20. Well, it's certainly that. Um, as to how smooth, not sure. Uh, it's got a slightly lightweight sound. It's also got a lightweight construction, so it doesn't weigh very much. You could easily put them on angle poise stands. You can stand them on almost anything. Um, they are a cheap microphone, but essentially it's a bit of electronics, cheap element, minimalist box. It will run on a range of voltages from four volts maybe up to the full 48. Pretty well everything I've plugged it into, it makes a noise, this one. Um, plastic isolation mount but it holds the microphone fairly securely, so maybe that's not as bad as it sounds. And for the sort of price that you can buy these things for, are they worth a punt? Well, they're a microphone, they work. Uh, I don't think they sound particularly nice. If we move from the dirt cheap Chinese to the Lexal, which I'm pleased to say has got a nice, actually, I'll turn it round to the camera. Blue LED on the front. A much better made product. Uh, I think if you were in the market for a cheapish one, these are going to do the trick for you. Um, I quite like this. It's certainly sturdy enough to give it a go. Uh, it doesn't sound bad. Um, it perhaps doesn't want to be compared with something mega expensive, but uh, but I guess you could. Let's try something. There you go. I've swapped this microphone for a Samsung CO1, a real make. Uh, it also has a blue LED, that's what gave me the idea. So we've swapped the unknown Chinese microphone for a Samsung. Um, it's not an expensive microphone, but it might give you a bit of a comparison between my voice on the microphones. Bit sneaky, isn't it? Let's 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 do a comparison between this CO1 and the BM800. Both budget microphones. One a decent budget microphone, and now we're on the BM800 cheap microphone. What do you think? Is that holding its own against the Samsung? Let's swap to the Samsung. Here we go. Back to the Samsung. We're now on the Samsung. The Samsung CO1 versus the BM800. What do you think? Is that my voice? Is my voice better on this? Let's be sneaky. Let's go back. Back to the Chinese one. So we're now back on the the BM800. And what I'll do So that's the BM800. Let's go back to the Lexal. I don't know. What do you think? Is that Lexal better? Worse, different than the Samsung? Samsung CO1 compared with the two of these, I don't know. It wasn't my intention to do that comparison in this particular test. But as it was sitting there and that blue LED gave me like The blue LED, incidentally, you probably think that's a pathetic thing to put on a microphone. But it does tell you the phantom power is applied. And very often when you're fault finding why a microphone doesn't work, phantom is often the answer. You just forgot to press the button. So having that blue LED is a sort of aid memoir. And if you're making videos, I guess it's always going to be facing the person. So you're not going to see it, are you, on a video? But it's a bit of a confidence thing, maybe. But I quite like it. So anyway, there we go. BM800 versus the Lexal. That's the proper test we've been listening to. You've heard a bit of guitar. You've heard speech on it. Let's just quickly go back to the SM7, our comparison mic. So what do you think? That's the SM7. SM7B dynamic against the BM800. That's the one we're listening to now. The BM800 against the Lexal. And so the Lexal is the one that you're hearing me on now. That's a choice of three, isn't it? And let's forget the Samsung. It was there for a bit of a sort of fun comparison between mic brands. But we've got the Lexal, we've got the BM800, we've got the SM7B. On your system, can you hear it? If you can, 
Is that a big difference in money, a worthwhile thing to you? Could you get away with a cheap one? Does it matter? Um, for a lot of people on YouTube, I'm suspecting that the cheap ones really are okay. I mean, after all, they haven't got to do a huge job, have they? Just go from your mouth to a microphone about a foot away. Uh, that's not too much to ask. Um, maybe the extra bells, whistles, the extra quality that we can't quite quantify, apart from the tone of these microphones. Maybe that does make a difference. I'm never really that convinced. I know the ones I like. And for me, I still am going back to the AKG 414 for everything that I'm not, uh, I don't want to be compromised on. So if something comes in, I'll record it on the 414 because they're there and I know them and I like the sound. Um, if it's just speaking like this, I'll happily use the SM7B. That doesn't bother me in the least. I don't think I'd use either of these two microphones for everyday mics. But if I was cash strapped, um, maybe I could. I'm not impressed that one of them didn't work. And that's probably just bad luck. Uh, but if you do get bad luck from an overseas supplier, having a promise of sending you another one and you sending one back is not really that useful, is it? If you have to pay the postage. I mean, some of them, they'll want you to pay the postage and then maybe you can claim it back. But it's a lot of money to hope, isn't it? You expect them to work and 50% uh, success rate in my book is not that good. So that's the end of episode 36, our quick look at two very cheap microphones from China. I guess I'm saying don't buy the BM800 unless you really have to. And you've got to be pretty poor to only consider that microphone. The Lexal was a bit of a punt, but I think I would buy that. But I know that I, I won't be using either of these for anything particularly important. Um, you'll have to make your own mind up on that one. See you on the next video. If you liked it, subscribe, give us a like. Um, that keeps everybody happy, keeps me happy. Um, see you on the next one. Take care. Bye.